Good afternoon. This is Akash Shwani, and I am Ashok Goja with the Midday News. The headlines. Senior BJP leader and Union Home Minister Amit Shah releases party's manifesto Sankalp Patra for Jharkhand Assembly elections in Ranchi. Promises to implement uniform civil code in the state, keeping the tribals out of it. External Affairs Minister S. Jay Shankar to be on a six-day visit to Australia and Singapore from today. Indian Railways running 145 special trains to ensure smooth travel during Chhat Puja. Met Department forecasts heavy rainfall with thunderstorms and lightning over Tamil Nadu, Puducherry, and Kerala today. In cricket, New Zealand beat India by 25 runs in Mumbai Test win series 3-0. And in badminton, Malvika Bansod to clash with Mia Blitchfield in the final of Hilo Open in Germany this afternoon. Senior BJP leader and Union Home Minister Amit Shah released the party's manifesto, Sankal Patra, for Jharkhand Assembly elections in Ranchi today. Addressing on this occasion, Mr. Shah said, if the BJP is voted to power, Uniform Civil Code UCC will be implemented in Jharkhand, but tribals will be out of purview of UCC. Jharkhand me UCC jaru raega. Hamari sarkar Jharkhand me UCC laegi, magar UCC se adivasyo ko poon taya hum bahar rakhenge, koi adivasi ke adhikar aur kanun ko UCC se hum nahi chedenge. मातृत्व सुरक्षा योजना छह पोषण किट और 21,000 की सहायता हम प्रदान करेंगे। The Home Minister said rules will be framed to check Bangladeshi infiltration from Santal Pargana areas as it has changed the demography of the state. He said infiltrators have snatched land from tribals after marrying tribal women. Mr. Shah said after making laws, land of tribals will be returned to them with retrospective effect. करोड़ों झारखंडवासी जो अपनी धरोहर की सुरक्षा करने के लिए कृत निश्चय है इसका प्रतिघोष इस संकल्प में कुशासन और भ्रष्टाचार का अंत करने की इनकी जो इच्छा है इसका प्रतिघोष इस संकल्प पत्र में गरीब कल्याण इसका प्रतिघोष इस संकल्प पत्र में दिखाई पड़ता है और देश की सीमाओं की सुरक्षा और आदिवासियों की भूमि बेटी और रोटी की सुरक्षा इसका भी प्रतिघोष इस संकल्प पत्र में दिखाई पड़ता है Mr. Shah said each woman in the state will be given 2,100 rupees per month under the Gogo Didi Yojana. All families will be provided an LPG cylinder at the cost of 500 rupees and two free cylinders will be given on the occasion of Deepavali and Raksha Bandhan. Unemployed graduate and postgraduate youths will receive 2,000 rupees per month for two years. He said 5 lakh employment opportunities will be provided within five years. 2,87,000 vacant government posts will be filled in a timely manner. In Maharashtra, nominations for the assembly elections can be withdrawn till tomorrow. We have a report from our correspondent. In Maharashtra, the nomination of 7,066 candidates have been found valid after scrutiny for 288 constituencies in the state. According to reports, around 36 candidates of the Mahayuti and 26 candidates from the Mahavikas Aghadi have turned rebel. The candidates have filed nominations against each other and have created friendly contests among the allies in many constituencies. Leaders of both alliances are trying to pacify these rebels to withdraw their nominations before tomorrow. Voting in the state will be held on 20th November and counting of votes will take place on 23rd November. Prarthana Akashwani News, Mumbai. In Kerala, Congress leader Priyanka Gandhi and leader of the opposition in the Lok Sabha Raj, Rahul Gandhi resumed another round of campaigning in Vainad parliamentary constituency today. External Affairs Minister S. Jay Shankar will be on a six-day visit to Australia and Singapore from today. During the visit, he will travel to Brisbane and inaugurate India's fourth consulate in Australia. Dr. Jay Shankar will also co-chair the 15th Foreign Minister's Framework Dialogue with his Australian counterpart Penny Wong in Canberra. He will deliver the keynote address at the inaugural session of the second Raisina Down Under to be held 
in the Australian Parliament House. On the second leg of the visit, the External Affairs Minister will travel to Singapore to address the 8th Round Table of ASEAN, India Network of Think Tanks, on the 8th of this month. Defence Minister Rajnath Singh has said that India's Atmanirbhar drive is yielding the desired results and the country is poised to reach 50,000 crore rupees in defence exports by 2029 and 30. Addressing the 65th Foundation Day celebrations in IIT Kanpur yesterday, he called upon the Indian youth to indigenously develop high-end technologies which the country imports to realise Prime Minister Narendra Modi's vision of Vixit Bharat. In Kerala, Union Minister for Railways Ashwini Vaishnav has arrived in Kochi on a day's visit to the state. He undertook a window trailing inspection on board a special train from Aluba to Kojikot to review key developments in railway infrastructure, Amrit Bharat and ongoing station redevelopment projects. At the Kojikot railway station, Mr. Vaishnav will hold another review meeting of the development projects undertaken by the Palakkad Railway Division. The Union Minister will also inaugurate the Knowledge Festival organised as part of the Golden Jubilee celebrations of Janmabhumi Delhi at Kojikot later in the day. The Telangana government has granted administrative sanction for implementing Phase 2 of the Hyderabad Metro Rail project. The second phase will cover a distance of 76.4 kilometres. It will be undertaken as a joint venture between the government of Telangana and the centre on a 50-50 basis. The estimated outlay of this joint venture is 24,269 crore rupees. A government order was issued to this effect yesterday. In Chhattisgarh, two police constables were injured in a Maoist attack in Sukma district today. Maoists attacked these Javans when they were on duty at the weekly market in Jagargunda town. Search operations in the area have been increased. This is Akashwani giving you the news. For quick news updates round the clock, follow us on our X handle at AIR News Alerts. And for details of stories and more, log on to our website www.newsonair.gov.in and download News on AIR app. सुनो सुनो पेंशनर सुनो जीवन का प्रमाण बनो हाथ में मोबाइल ले लो चेहरे का पहचान ले लो आसान है इजी है ऐप इसकी क्रेजी है आपकी ही मर्जी है अपना लो ये अर्जी है फेस का ऑथेंटिकेशन लाइव का वेरिफिकेशन देना ही है कंपलशन कर दिया सिंपलीफिकेशन कहीं जाने की जरूरत कहाँ फेस ऑथेंटिकेशन कहाँ फिर भी जाने की जरूरत जहाँ बीएसी के कैंप वहाँ कभी जाने की जरूरत कहाँ डीओपीपीडब्ल्यू जहाँ हम लोगों का पहल अनोखा बदला भारत कर धमाका इंडियन रेलवेज इज ऑपरेटिंग अराउंड ट्वेंटी फेस्टिवल स्पेशल ट्रेन्स टुडे फ्रॉम दिल्ली एंड सिया टू वेरियस पार्ट ऑफ द कंट्री These include special trains to Darbanga, Baroni, Patna, Katra, Muzaffarpur, Balia, Kamakya and Azamgarh. For Chhat Puja, 145 special trains are being operated from 2nd to 8th of this month, ensuring smooth travel during key ritual days of Chhat. The railway is facilitating the movement of an additional 2 lakh passengers daily, ensuring seamless travel for millions of devotees during these festive occasions. Indian Railways is operating around 7,000 special trains in view of the festive seasons to accommodate the significant surge in passenger traffic from 1st of October to 30th of November. Talking to Akashwani News, Executive Director of Railway Board Dilip Kumar said that the railway is set to carry more than 1 crore passengers during the festive period. We have planned uh, more than 7,500 special trains during this festival season. In the month of October, we have run already 3,800 special trains. And in this month, we are going to run more than 3,700 special trains. In this festival season, we have uh, generated more than 1 crore 20 lakh additional seats, which has provided comfort to the passengers. Today also, we are running special trains from New Delhi, Anand Bihar, Delhi, Amritsar, Mumbai, Ahmedabad, Surat, Udana, 
Tirupati, Coimbatore, and all other important cities. We have done the analysis through our artificial intelligence system and the waiting list in the normal trains. Based on that, we have decided to run these special trains. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has congratulated Duma Boko on being elected as the president of Botswana. In his message, Mr. Modi said he looks forward to working closely with him to further strengthen India-Botswana bilateral ties. Mr. Boko assumed office following elections that ended nearly 60 years of rule by the Botswana Democratic Party in the Southern African nation. Minister of State for Environment Kirti Vardhan Singh launched India's updated National Biodiversity Strategy and Action Plan, NBSAP, at the 16th meeting of the Conference of Parties, COP16, in Colombia. During the launch event, Mr. Singh highlighted India's whole of government and whole of society approach in updating its NBSAP. The updated biodiversity strategy acknowledges environmental changes and outlines strategies to address them. It addresses the challenges through ecosystem restoration, species recovery programs, and community-driven conservation efforts. In Bangladesh, the International Society for Krishna Consciousness, ISKCON, has called on the daily Amar Desh editor, Mahmudur Rahman, to seek apology to the nation within the next seven days following his remarks about the organization. Addressing a press conference in Dhaka yesterday, ISKCON leaders expressed their concerns about Mahmudur Rahman's remarks. The festival of Bhai Dooj is being celebrated today, celebrated two days after Diwali. The day marks the day of the end of the five-day-long festivities. It is known by different names in various parts of the country, like Bhai Pota, Bhau Beach, Bhai Tika, or Yamadvitya. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has extended greetings to all countrymen on the occasion. In a social media report, Mr. Modi expressed his wish that this auspicious festival would deepen the affection between brothers and sisters. The India Meteorological Department has forecast heavy rainfall with thunderstorms and lightning over Tamil Nadu, Puducherry and Kerala today. It also predicted a gradual fall in the minimum and maximum temperatures over northwest and east India by 2 to 3 degrees Celsius during the next four days. The Andaman and Nicobar Islands are also likely to witness heavy rainfall on the 5th of this month. In cricket, New Zealand defeated India by 25 rounds in Mumbai Test Match, clinching the Series 3-0. At Vankere Stadium in Mumbai, chasing a victory target of 147 rounds, India crumbled to 121 all out. Despite a fight back, India lost their last four wickets for just 21 rounds on day three of the match. New Zealand's Ajaz Patel was the architect of India's downfall, claiming four crucial wickets. The Indian innings faltered early when skipper Rohit Sharma fell for just 11, followed by the dismissals of Shubman Gill and Virat Kohli for one each. Earlier, New Zealand concluded their two innings with scores of 235 rounds and 174 rounds. Hosts scored 263 rounds in their first innings. This series victory for New Zealand marks their first test series win in India since 1955, ending India's 18 test series unbeaten streak at home. This is India's first test series loss at home in 12 years. India's Malvika Bansot stormed into the final of the Hilo Open Badminton Tournament's women's singles competition. She will face Denmark's seventh seed, Mia Blitzfeld, in Saarland Hall, Germany, in the title clash later today. And now, before we end this bulletin, the headlines once again. Senior BJP leader and Union Home Minister Amit Shah releases party's manifesto Sankal Patra for Jharkhand Assembly elections in Ranchi. External Affairs Minister S. Jay Shankar to, de- to be on a six-day visit to Australia and Singapore from today. Indian Railways running 147 special trains to ensure smooth travel during Chhat Puja. Med Department forecasts heavy rainfall with thunderstorms and lightning over Tamil Nadu, Puducherry and Kerala today. In cricket, New Zealand beat India by 25 rounds in Mumbai Test Match, win the series 3-0. And in badminton, Malvika Bansod to clash with Mia Blechfield in the final of Hilo Open in Germany this afternoon. And with that, we end the midday news.